الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا الله وأشهد أن محمدا نبيه ورسوله بعد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام عند كيف تسوس من مين إنجلش دنيا الحمد لله ولا شيء إنجلش Okay, what I'll do, I'm going to have to do a simultaneous translation because my native language, of course, is I'm from Texas. So I'll be translating from Texas to English. <laughs> so I can do that, by the way. Alhamdulillah. We are praises to Allah and we thank Him for the opportunity to be here. And we always ask for the peace and blessings to be upon all of His prophets from Adam to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for all of those who follow the righteous way till the last day. Then usually we make the statement of Shabbat Eilat, Eilat Eilat which means I bear witness that there really is only one God to worship, and all worship is for Him exclusively. And we bear witness to the messengership of Muhammad, and as such to the previous messengers before Him. And that, of course, is going to lead us right into our topic tonight, which is the messengership of Jesus the Christ. Uh, from the Islamic perspective, of course. As we go along, I want you to remember that you came here to get another perspective. So this should be different from what you know. This is the whole idea. So I'm letting, still there will be things that questions, ideas, concepts that come to your mind that you would like clarification on. So this is why we're going to sit later amongst you and hand out to you some paper just in case you weren't prepared, we are, hopefully. And also pens if you don't have pens. And then if you don't know how to write, we'll get a secretary for you and we'll get your questions and your responses as much as we can before the program is over so that when we end the program we'll be able to then go into instantly answering the, the questions you have. In the case that we're not able to handle all of them, uh, regarding time, because that happens. We do have a website that you can go to to pick up a lot of information there. Actually, a series of websites. And then, in addition to that, we have a place that you can ask questions called Ask Islam at AOL.com. The websites are called IslamAlways.com, IslamTomorrow.com, and IslamYesterday.com. <laughs> sort of a sense of a time thing happening here. The one missing is called Islam Today, and that, that was actually our first website, but uh, it now belongs to somebody else, so we have the one surrounding it. Um, the, uh, the subject of messengership in general, and then we'll come specifically to Jesus Christ, uh, peace be upon him. In, in Islam, there is uh, actually more than just the word prophet. There, is, there are two words. One is Nabi, and the other one is Rasul. And all the messengers are, are Nabis. They fall in the category of Anbiya, prophet, uh, uh, as prophets. But this other distinction called a Rasul is one who delivers our soul, a message. So he's called messenger. <coughs> In English, it doesn't carry the status, so I have to explain it to you from the standpoint that the meaning of it. It's a very profound statement to say somebody is a messenger. All of them fall in the category of Andhya, but only certain ones are messengers. And those who come with a book or a writing are considered to be messengers. Therefore, immediately, you know, Moses, of course, had his the commandments that came on my son, so he has to be a messenger because he has something in written form. Many of you don't, don't know that uh, Abraham actually had written message. He had lost for years, but there is some apocrypha which refers to that, and then Islam he is considered one of the messengers for having something written, as does um, David and Suleiman, because if you remember they have the songs attributed to them, in Arabic they're called the Zabur. <coughs> now somebody's taking care of the Sheikh, and I like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> I may go off for you guys now. So. Some of what I'm going to tell you is uh, 
uh, known to you already. Some of it I'm going to talk to you about is going to be known to the Muslims. But some of the things I'll talk about tonight, even some of the Muslims won't really be conversant in that. They'll be surprised. They'll learn something. Oh. Some of what I'm going to share with you will be um, where we are alike. We have a commonality. Some things you, you'll do is more like a comparison. And some things may seem strange to you. But that's the whole idea, and I hope you enjoy the program. I do a lot of etymology, as a matter of fact. Uh, um, if I were to hang a sign out in front of my office, it would say etymologist at large. Now, how many of you know what that word means? All right, this is my kind of university. <laughs> of course, it means I'm a pet doctor. Anyway. <laughs> It's the study of words. It's to take the word and break it down to see where it came from. So we get an understanding from The word here, as we broke down, was our sabla and one who has a message is a rasul. And so that is, of course, what we were talking about first. Now we come to the next prophet after David and Suleiman, if there is a war or Psalms, is going to be Jesus, the Christ, peace and blessing be upon him. And then we'll see what is his status according to Islam. According to Islam, we, we have information that says that he has a book. He actually has a book, therefore he is a full messenger. He's a prophet and a messenger. This means that uh, he had something that was with him physically, that's a book. It doesn't exist today anymore in its original form, but there's a lot of reference to it. And of course the Christians immediately know it as the Gospel. That's what you will call it probably as the Gospel. Or you may call it by its name the Injil or the Evangel. If you know it in the English version it's called Evangel. And in Arabic, Injil. Now, do we have any Arab Christians with us tonight? Anybody here is a, a, a Christian Arab? Uh, how about this? Anybody know any Arab Christians? Okay. They have a Bible in their language. Called it, it's, it's called Kitab al Muqaddis. or Muqaddis, it means holy. The holy Kitab or book. And you say holy book. And in Arabic, just like you say holy Bible. Bible is from Kone Greek and it means from Biblios. It means book. It's simple as that. The word Bible doesn't appear in the Bible. It doesn't appear there. But it appears in the Quran many times. In fact, people who follow the Bible or the book are called the Kitab. People of the book. And the word Kitab in Arabic means book. So Jesus, peace be upon him, was sent with a Kitab or a book. He's therefore a full prophet and a full messenger of God to a Muslim. What we know about him, for Muslims, he fulfills the scripture, the Holy Scripture, since the time of Abraham and Moses and David and Solomon. And this scripture is teaching that there will be one who will come, and he will be of a miracle birth, and he will be a messenger to the people, and he will be in the last days. Pay close attention to this because you'll find that this exactly fits Jesus the Christ. Peace be upon him. First of all, he already came, but he's gone, right? But the Muslims believe he's going to come back. They have no doubt about this. Muslims believe Jesus the Christ will return in the last days. Therefore, he fulfills the scripture that he's coming, he's a miracle birth, he preaches a message, and he's also in the last day. Yet Muhammad peace be upon him still fits in there as a prophet and a messenger because he did what? Well. He testified to the messenger before him and all of them before and he also mentioned that Jesus would be back. So there's plenty of room here for everybody. Okay. Makes sense? Everybody give me so far? The problem that the Jews have with Jesus Okay, is that they don't want to accept a number of things. First of all, they don't want to accept that he is the miracle birth. They don't want to accept that the immaculate conception. They don't want to accept that he is the prophet. 
They don't want to accept that he is the Christ or the Messiah. And they don't want to accept that, you know, that he, he did miracles. Nor do they want to accept that he's going to come back in the last day. They're only looking for the Messiah to come in the last day period. That's it. They don't believe that the advent is taking place yet. For the Muslim, they say, no, he did come. He had a miracle birth. He was born to Mary. There was no human intervention there. It's a magnificent conception. Jesus, peace be upon him, was born. And one of the first miracles is that he actually spoke as a newborn baby and defended his mother against the charges that they brought against her for having an affair or something. You know? And he, instead of her defending herself, the baby spoke and startled the people very much. I mean, you know, a, a little baby speaking would be a shock anyway. But that is what we learn from the Quran that he spoke and defended his mother. So this is the first one, but not certainly not the last. People being cured of diseases, skin diseases, etc. People who were lame, crippled, and so on, being able to walk again. People who were born, born blind, and now they can see. Not restoring sight, uh, which is certainly a miracle in itself. Somebody's blind to see again, but how about somebody that never saw before, and now they can see? That would be amazing. And then even, and we're talking about curing people, how about curing people of death? And he brought somebody back to life who had actually been dead. None of these things um, are normal. These are not things that you could just say, well, you know, it's just a lucky guess, or I don't know. It's just something big. So here is the, the Jesus of the Quran who does all of these things. It's interesting that, that this is mentioned, by the way, in the Bible. And it even talks about prophets before Jesus who did the same thing. Even the bones of Ezekiel were used to bring back the dead. And also that others were cured of blindness and sickness and so on. But the main point here is that Jesus fulfills all of the things that were mentioned in the Old Testament. Where the problem really comes in, as far as the Muslim point of view, that the Jews did not want to accept that Jesus was coming with this message because in fact he was very, very hard on it. Now, if you read the New Testament, you find that he took a whip and he drove the money changers out of the temple. And those being whipped considered that that wasn't very nice. And he kind of put them out of business and probably hurt a little bit along the way. So there was a lot of objection to what he was saying. And he called them vipers, which is, that's not nice, you know, from their point of view. A viper, a snake. And um, also it mentions that he said that if your righteousness didn't exceed theirs, that you couldn't even go to heaven. So the Pharisees, the ones who were charged with the responsibility of the religion uh, for the rabbis, etc. at that time, they was, wouldn't be put down a lot by Jesus. So you can understand why that they had a real thing to try to discredit him from the beginning. They didn't want anything to do with him and they tried in every possible way to shut down his message and those who follow. He has quite a following, at least from what we understand from the Bible, because it says very clearly that uh, in all four Gospels mention this. Now, the, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, don't necessarily agree on every point. They don't, and some of them don't have this part of the story, some don't have that part. Some actually uh, contradict how some of the things happen. But this one particular event is clear and it's on all four. All four Gospels talk about the, what we call the, uh, the Palm Sunday. Everybody know what it's all about Palm Sunday? When they lay down the, the palms as he entered, the palm of, uh, leaves or, uh, you know, the big thing that they got on the street, and then he rode in on the donkey. And uh, they were laying down and the saying says, Hosanna, 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 and then he comes in on the donkey. All four of them speak about this stuff. So, it looks like he was well received on that Sunday. 